you know, go to practices, be a part of this uh, organization, see the success that uh, Shesty's been getting, and then to kind of just, you know, to get through the trading deadline and then just buckle up, put the gear on, get out there. And he played just as intense as he always plays Georgiev. And I, I don't know if we're giving him enough credit for the, for the performance that he put on. And every time that he's been called on through all this stuff, he stepped in and he's, he's had a, you know, he's just gone in there as a professional. And I'm sure we're going to see that one with the other with Hank. But I, I love the kid. I love Georgiev. I probably, I probably like him more uh, than Shesterkin just because, you know, obviously he's been around a little more than that. But there's just something about Georgiev, the way he carries himself, and especially through what's been going on and 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 sharing that backup duty with, you know, the king. And again, I turn around to Coach Quinn and I give him credit that he's got the guts and the balls or whatever you want to say to to be able to know that he's got a legend on his team, a legend to the franchise anyway, and he says, look, I'm going with the kid. We're going with the kid. We're going with the kid. Uh, the other kid. You know what I'm saying? And I think that's impressive too. But I can't I can't rave enough about Georgiev. I mean, I can't remember who that, that glove save he made there at the end. But, I mean, the Islanders easily could have won that game, you know, by another four or five goals. I mean, he was just incredible. And as a professional, as an athlete, and especially as a goaltender, and you know it, buddy, uh, just the focus you have to have in that building – uh, with all the pressure and everything else, I, I just can't say enough about the way he played last night. Yeah, and he's been put in a tough situation, too, because, you know, with the three-headed goalie monster, and, you know, he was playing very well in the beginning of the year and was sort of taking over, and, and you know, it seemed as Quinn was, was ready to sort of hand him, you know, the reins a, a couple of times early on, and he, you know, he, he stumbled a little bit, and, you know, and... Uh, he was he could have been taken over the spot, but then you know you, you have Shes York in there, and he is the heir apparent, and you know he comes up and and Georgiev is finding himself in the press box, you know on the bench, not playing as much, and and anytime he's been called on, except for the one island of the game, he had he had a tough game, but other than that, he's been as solid as it come, and like you know like I said, I mean that game could have been two nothing early you know, in the Islanders' favor. Um, and, and the Rangers really didn't have a very good game defensively. Um, and, and he, yeah, he, he's probably stole that game. Yeah, you sort of, you know, you forget, you know, his contributions to the game after, you know, the big overtime goal. But, yeah, he was huge. And, and you know, he's being rewarded. He's starting tomorrow in, in Montreal. Uh, well-deserved. Like, like you said, it, it does. It takes guts for Quinn to to. To do that, you know, to stick with him um, over Lundqvist. I'm sure Lundqvist is going to get probably a game, get one of these games against the Flyers. Mm-hmm. Um, and we'll see what happens from there. But, yeah, you know, just looking at the way it was set up, it really was – so Shorkin was, was pretty much the starter. Georgiev was obviously the backup. And with, with Shorkin gone, Quinn's like, okay, so I go to my backup, and the backup is Georgiev. And, uh, yeah, he's continuing to play lights out. Any concern, and let's say Shesty's still in the lineup here too, uh, the amount of shots, I mean, they're averaging now pretty much steady 40, 40 shots against. So between Shesterkin and now Georgiev last night too, and, and even previous games, it seems to be that number's gone back up. And I don't know if it's, um, you know, whether it's, you know, look, love the defensive core, love the guys, everything else. But are you concerned? I mean, maybe I'm a little concerned because that number doesn't seem to be coming down again. And as far as a defensive team, and yes, we've got the goaltending, and yes, we can step back. And, you know, obviously, uh, you know, Shesty's those records with uh, winning four games with 40 shots against in each. I mean, that's great for, for the goaltending situation. It's great for the kid and everything else. But I think, do we should we be concerned? that That's a high number to pretty much let up consistently in like five, six games in a row. And, and yes, they're winning. That's okay, except for, the, you know, the Boston game or whatever. But what, what's your take on, on the rubber that the, the guys are, you know, uh, having to face here? Yeah, I mean, obviously you'd like to see the, the shot totals, you know, a lot less than, you know, 45, which is what it was last night. Um, but, you know, not to get all analytical on you, 
Um, but I s- looked at some stats today, and, and really what they're saying over the course of these games, while they are giving up these 40-plus shots, the quality of the shots have been actually very low. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, a large percentage of the shots that they're giving up are not of the sort of high-quality variety. So, you know, if they can continue to do that, and I don't know if that's being done purposely um, or it's just the way it's sort of going with the team, um, the, the defense and, and the types of shots they're giving up. So if, if, if they're going to be on the lower quality side, I mean, I, you know, it's you know, really not that big, big of a deal that they're giving up 40 plus shots a game. And obviously, you know what, that seemed to be the, the philosophy of, uh, Tortorella and AV during, uh, you know, Lundquist's heyday and it never really seemed to bother him or the team, you know, cause they had plenty of success during those times. So, you know, yeah, but- obviously you're dealing with younger goalies. I, you know, I get it. But, you know, it doesn't seem to have bothered them so far. It seems like the more work that these guys are getting, the better they are. But, sure, would I like to see the defense uh, stiffen up a little bit here in the in the final month as they start playing, you know, the Capitals and the Penguins and the Blues? Yeah, obviously, I, you know, those teams are going to get those higher quality shots. And, and you don't need um, those teams, you know, Sidney Crosby's and the likes, uh, you know, being part of a 45-shot barrage every night. So. I, I think eventually it will catch up to them. Um, so, you know, yeah, I, I think they got to stiffen up a little bit here. They had been. I mean, they, they had been playing well. You know, the the shot totals had been lowering. But, yeah, over the last, you know, whatever it is, week or two weeks, they've definitely climbed back up there where they're relying more on their goaltenders to, to win, you know, these games or keep them in them. Um, so, yeah, I mean, yeah, of course it's a concern. It. You know, less of a concern if they're they're keeping those shots of the you know lower quality um, variety. But yeah, I mean, y- you'd like to see that number you know in the lower thirties than you know the mid forties for sure. Yeah, I don't think it's going to be sustainable now that they're becoming a potential playoff team. <laughs> um. <laughs> well, and that won't. And and if they do get into the playoffs, that definitely won't fly. I mean, you know, yeah. it's. You know, the game tightens up so much in the playoffs. We've got such a defensive battle um, in, in the playoffs. If, if their defense is playing like a sieve out there, I mean, they're going to be swept away, you know, before we settle into our couch. So, um, yeah, they, they got to find a way to, to get back to the way they were playing, you know, you know, three or four weeks ago on defense. So, Well, I mean, a couple of things, obviously a couple of big things are solidified now, especially this lineup, the trade deadline's done. Uh, Brady Shea, that's obviously an adjustment here, and we'll, we'll see um, how that pans out one way or the other in terms of uh, you know how Lindy and, and DQ are going to manage that. And, and they're smart guys. You, you know they're definitely looking at this. I know they're not uh, – I'm sure it's not like in the meetings, ah, eh, who the hell cares how many shots they get on goal uh, as long as we win. Or they're not going to play reckless. I'm sure it's, in the, it's a priority for them to bring it down. And, you know, that's that's something, like I said <laughs> – <laughs> because if they do, you know, just trying to get in here and, and, and make the play. I mean, look, we're still quite a few states away from, from getting into the playoffs. It's it's exciting to be there and, and, and to talk about it this way. And we, I think more than anything right now, the fun thing for all of us is, uh, you know, as fans more than anything, is to just enjoy one game at a time here coming up. Last night was fantastic. It'll be great to go into Montreal. Montreal is obviously is not the team that they have been in, in a long time. They they they've uh, obviously let a couple of guys go. They're they're in a they don't know what they're doing in Montreal as far as uh, you know structure and, and the future and everything else. And yeah, home of horrors and everything else. But I mean, it's going to be the first time in a long time uh, the Rangers should feel feel pretty good going in there. I know they went in there earlier in the season and we had a big game and Lemieux and everything else, but. Uh, this is a different team now. Uh, they're more cohesive. Uh, they're tighter, as far as the Rangers are concerned. And and that's a, I think that's another thing too, man. I mean, granted, Mika and Panera have been there, but the, the the scoring has been spread out. I, I think that's a credit to you know at least the system up front with with how Quinn's running the lines and the different things he's he's throwing at them as far as different defenses. You know, against a, a, a Barry Trotz team last night. Uh, you know, and, and getting through the, the onslaught of the goals and, and, and the comeback and, and winning and everything else. I think, uh, you know, be impressed with the young team and with the young guys and everything else but, and, and, and everybody kind of contributing. So offensively, you know, it, it's all kind of going pretty well up front. And, you know, defensively, like I said, we're winning games, so we can't really sit here and go, oh, you know, uh, we got to straighten all this stuff out. I mean, it's it's working. 
And at the end of the day, like I said, two points is two points, and, and we're closer to a playoff berth, which is crazy. And now we, I think everybody feels pretty darn confident that not only can we make the playoffs, but, hey, whoever we do play, if we get in there, we can be competitive. Obviously, we still have to stay healthy. We'll see what happens with the, you know, the next couple of games because the, the intensity level is going to go up. You saw it last night, man. That was game one post-trade deadline and, you know, uh, playoff push and a team now that, that is, can feel it, a fan base that wants it. And, uh, yeah, the letdown will be something to look at. But I, I just don't see that happen, KD. I don't, I don't know if that's the kind of team. They played a stinker against Boston in, in terms of the fact that, you know, maybe they were, just, it, they were just drained out after, you know, having a good week there and then coming home. And, and like I said, they, you, like you said and everybody else, best team in the league and everything else. But, the, you know, the Bruins played the day before. And they've got some veterans on that team. And that's a Boston Bruin team that, you know, went to the Stanley Cup Finals last year. They're playing a lot of hockey, a lot of miles on those skates. I really thought they should have been able to take them at home that afternoon. But since then, like I said, they went in, they're playing and everything else. But a couple of things here we got to kind of to watch. It's another step, I guess, for for us to watch Coach Q, um, you know, handle this going forward. And I think that's, like I said, it's, it's try and have fun with it. But, you, you know, like I said, we're going to be throwing Elio's pizza against the wall uh, against Montreal or and, and Philly, too, because we're, like I said, they, they brought us in, man. That, that's, this, is a, this is a fun team, a talented team to watch. And, uh, you know, I don't want them to lose anymore. Well, <laughs> I, didn't mind, if you, I, didn't, I didn't mind it so much if, in the past, but I don't want them to lose anymore, man. Well, if you don't want them to lose anymore, then you probably shouldn't go to any more games because the only <laughs> game that they've lost – and the last nine is the one you were at. Oh, so. come on, man. <laughs> <laughs> Why don't you stay away from the garden for the next month, a couple of months, all right? Stay all out right. on Long Island. All don't right, go, don't venture yourself into the city. <laughs> <laughs> well, look, uh, what about the – I saw you on Twitter today. What's, what's with this quote from uh, – from Coach Q, Co- listen to me, Coach Q, Coach Q, I've done a lot of hockey talk tonight so far, but um, one of the things I thought tonight is we really had a between the ears, we had it between the ears, and we had it between the legs. I don't think a range of coaches ever said anything like that before, buddy. You know what? Uh, Torts used to say that. He used to say, like, uh, Zuccarello had big ones tonight, or... <laughs> He had him the size of the building, or he'd say something <laughs> like that. Like Torch definitely would would uh, reference uh, his his uh, twig and berries or Zuccarello's <laughs> twig and berries. I'm trying to keep this clean for our younger audience. Oh, um, but uh, I, you know, I love that that Quinn comes out and say that. I don't know, you know, if he's sort of you know feeling good about himself these days with how the team is playing and and a little bit more sort of jovial around the. Uh, <laughs> the press core, uh, but I love it. I love when when the coaches come out there and 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 are honest and and give that kind of opinion. I mean, it's definitely funny, um, and I definitely got a good laugh out of it. But you know, I, I think it 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 gives you a little bit more of the mindset of this team right now. They're feeling good. They're feeling confident. Their coach is okay with with talking about his manhood during. Uh, uh, you're talking about his player, their, his players' manhoods. Um, you know, in a press conference and, uh, you know, it just goes along with why I think a lot of fans are starting to, you know, fall in love with this team. You just as a hardworking team, you know, I haven't seen this kind of, uh, you know, excitement or, or love around a team. I mean, obviously everybody got, got into the team that went to the, to the cup, uh, uh, finals against the Kings in, in 14. But I, I tell you what, that. That 2012 team under Tortorella, you know, was a real beloved team that lost to the Devils that year in the conference finals. And, you know, I'm starting to feel that kind of or see that kind of feeling towards this team from the Rangers fan base. And and really, you know, on that team, you had guys like Prust and Boyle and Callahan and and Dubinsky and those real sort of hardworking guys. And, you know, I, I, I feel like we have those type of guys again. You know, when you look at Lemieux and and Howden and McKeg and and D'Angelo, you know, guy, you know, like characters, you know, I think everybody loves, a, you know, a character on the team. And they sort of joking around there. I saw something online, like, I think the MSG Twitter uh, feed was was showing the guys walking off the ice after the game and and, you know, Lemieux yelling, yeah, blue shirts, you know, and and uh, 
And D'Angelo's going, yes, yes, yes.